everyone and welcome back to the channel. I want to ask you to please remember to like and share these videos if you enjoy what I do and so others can also find them and also please remember to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little notification bell so you can be notified of my next uploaded videos. The gift of a blood donation has been life-saving for many around the world. For those from war to those suffering from terminal illness. And today we're going to learn about the man behind the blood banking system. His name is Charles Richard Drew. Charles was born in Washington, D.C. on June 3, 1904 to Richard and Nora Drew. Charles grew up in the neighborhood of Foggy Bottom, which was a largely middle class and interracial neighborhood in Washington. As a young boy, he became a paper boy at the age of 12. He sold a few of Washington's newspapers from a street corner stand, and after a year, he managed to have six other boys working for him. This allowed him to cover more territory and make more money. So already as a young man, he was ingenious and brilliant at making a living and running a business. But as Charles grew older, he held a few other jobs like supervising city playgrounds, construction jobs, and working as a lifeguard at a local pool. Now as a student, Charles was smart but not an outstanding student. He attended Stevens Elementary and then Dunbar High School. Dunbar at this time was one of the best college prep schools in the country for blacks and whites who attended. But he was very athletic and participated in multiple sports and he even lettered in four. But he never dreamed that when he grew up, he would become a medical doctor or be the innovator of such great innovations in blood banking. It is actually noted in his senior yearbook that he wanted to become an engineer. Now, after graduating high school in 1922, he attended Amherst College in Massachusetts on an athletic scholarship. He excelled in track and football, but eventually he developed an interest in medical sciences after taking a few biology courses. In 1920, his oldest sister, Elsie, died of tuberculosis with complications from influenza, and he himself found himself hospitalized due to an injury from playing football while attending Amherst College. Now these two major events in his life, he cited himself is what garnered his interest in medicine. He would go on to receive his A.B. from Amherst College in 1926. And he wanted to go on to medical school, but he needed to raise money for that giant task. So he took a job as the athletic director and instructor at Morgan College in Baltimore, where he spent two years and transformed this mediocre team into serious competitors. Now due to racial segregation, most African Americans, when they did attend medical school, attended black institutions like Meharry Medical College and so on. But Charles applied to Howard University and was not accepted. He also applied to Harvard who did accept him but postponed his entrance. So he applied to McGill University in Montreal, Canada, where they had a reputation for better treatment of blacks. Charles excelled academically here as well as in athletics. And he graduated in 1933, second in his class of 137 students. Now from 1933 to 1935, 
he worked his internship in surgical residency at Montreal General Hospital, and he worked closely with a professor in bacteriology exploring ways to treat shock with transfusion and other fluid replacement. This led to his interest in transfusion medicine. Charles desired to extend his surgical residency in the U.S. at the Mayo Clinic, but most American medical centers rarely took African American residents. So he went to work at Howard University College of Medicine as a pathology instructor. He then moved on to surgical instructor and moved up to chief surgical resident at Freedman's Hospital. Charles trained more with the Department of Surgery chair at Howard University for about three more years. Then he obtained a fellowship to train with a well-known surgeon, Alan O. Whipple, at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Now at the same time that he earned a doctorate in medicine from Columbia University, he was working on his fellowship under surgeon Alan O. Whipple. Now at Presbyterian, he worked on studies of treating shock, fluid balance, transfusion, and blood chemistry and preservation. And his dissertation was an experimental blood bank at Presbyterian Hospital, which was opened in 1939. Charles went on to receive his doctorate in 1940 in medical science. It was actually in June of 1940 that he successfully completed his doctorate, making him the first African American to obtain a degree from Columbia University in this specific field. In April 1939, at a conference, Charles met a woman named Minnie Lenore Robbins. She was a professor of home economics at Spelman College in Atlanta. And just a few months later, in September of 1939, the two were married. They went on to have three daughters and one son. And as a matter of fact, their oldest daughter, who was born in 1940, was named B.B., after the blood bank BB project he was working on at the time. After completing his fellowship and degree in New York, Charles returned back to Howard University to work as assistant professor of surgery. But in September of 1940, he was asked to come back to New York to direct the Blood for Britain project. At this time, Britain was under attack by Germany in the war so they collected and shipped plasma to Britain. Charles discovered during his doctoral studies at Columbia that blood plasma could be preserved for two months and longer through deliquefaction, which is the separation of liquid blood from the cells. And when ready, the plasma would return to its original state via reconstruction. It is this discovery and his studies as a fellow and obtaining his doctorate that led them to call him back to New York because of his expertise in collecting blood plasma, separating the plasma from the blood cells. Now while working on the Blood for Britain program where they were collecting blood plasma and sending it over to Britain for the military personnel and people who were injured during war, Charles also set up a blood banking system, so he instituted uniform procedures and standards for collecting blood and processing plasma. And after the Blood for Britain, for Britain project ended in January of 1941, Charles was appointed assistant director of a pilot program for a national blood bank system here in the United States. One of his innovations was mobile blood donations or basically a mobile blood donation station so they eventually would later call that blood mobiles ironically the US stipulated that the Red Cross had to exclude African Americans from donating blood when the US themselves entered the war 
Now, this meant that Dr. Charles Drew was not eligible to donate blood, even though he was the leading expert in blood banking in the country, and he established the program. Dr. Drew criticized the policies of the U.S. and called them unscientific and insulting to African Americans. Dr. Charles Drew passed his American board surgery exams and received his certification in early 1941. He accomplished this while working on this huge project with Blood to Britain and creating the National Blood Bank. So he was a very busy man. After completing his innovative work in New York, he returned to Howard University in October and he became chair of the Department of Surgery and Chief of Surgery at the Freedmen's Hospital. He is the first African American to be appointed as an examiner for the American Board of Surgery. Now he worked for nine years at Howard University where he trained and mentored medical students and surgical residents. He also fought against the exclusion of black physicians from local medical societies, medical specialty organizations, and the American Medical Association, of which you can see a letter in response to one of his uh, complaints and protests here in the video. During his life, he received many honors and awards for his work and in the for creating the blood banks and for the discovery of how to separate plasma from blood and he was honored and recognized as the eminent expert in his field now dr charles drew died on april 1st 1950 in burlington north carolina from injuries he sustained in a serious car accident while he was en route to a conference. But he left a tremendous legacy with his blood bank work and his education and training of future generations of black doctors and medical practitioners here in the United States. If you have ever donated blood or received blood for any type of medical situation, you can thank Dr. Charles Drew for his brilliance and his hard work in creating the blood bank system in the U.S. And you can also thank him for his dedication and leadership in the creation of so many young doctors and medical experts who came out of Howard University. So guys, that's it for today's video. And as always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment on what you think about today's story. I'll see you soon.